I'm going to start by using the init screen function from ncurses. This is a library that you're gonna to need to install to make the code in this video. It's a very popular library. I'll put information on the description on how you can actually install it with your package manager. I'm just gonna open the man page for init screen. You can see that this basically initializes the ncurses screen. So I'm gonna start by adding this include file, curses.h. And I'm gonna just call init screen. I'm gonna save this into window. And I'm gonna end this with end win. This will just clean up afterwards. You can see this function right over here. Afterwards, I'm gonna define some options on my window. And the first one is gonna be an option called keypad. So I'm gonna open the manual page here. Let's go to the section that talks about keypad. First of all, you can see that keypad accepts two arguments. So you have the window and some kind of Boolean value right over here. So I'm just gonna start by calling keypad and passing in the window. And I'm gonna continue on and read a little bit about keypad. You can see that if you enable keypad, if BF is true, the user can press a function key such as an arrow key and wgetch returns a single value representing the function key. For example, you have key left. So this is exactly what we want. We want to get some keyboard input from the user. So in this case, I'm gonna pass in true right over here. Another option I wanna use is called no delay. This is also very useful. Also has a similar signature. So no delay this gets the window and then you have a Boolean value. Let's just go ahead here and you can see that no delay actually causes get ch to be non-blocking. So that's great because we, we don't want the game to wait for the next key every time. We want it to continue running and only if there's a difference in the key, it's actually gonna change the direction. So in this case, I'm gonna use no delay and just pass in true for that. Afterwards, I'm gonna define some variables. So first one is gonna hold the position of the character. Let's start on zero, zero. Afterwards, we have the position of the food. And for this, I'm gonna use the random function. So I'm gonna open man3 rand. First of all, I'm gonna include the additional library right over here. And you can see I have two functions here. I have srand, which will seed the random number with something. And I just have rand. Now, honestly, I don't really care about seeding the random number right now. So I'm just gonna use rand right away and use the default seed that it comes with. Notice that this means that every time it's gonna be the same random numbers. So it's not really gonna be random, but, and this is a good place to remind that this code is just for fun and I'm gonna skip a lot of checks and the random here is not really gonna be random. I'm gonna limit both numbers to not exceed 20. Now let's go ahead and add two variables for managing the direction. I'm gonna make it start going right. So I'm gonna use direction x equals one. Direction y is gonna be zero. Now I can go ahead and start my infinite loop. That'll actually run the game. And I'm gonna start by calling wgetch. So I'm gonna open the manual page here, wgetch. You can see that it gets an argument of the window, so I'm gonna pass the window. And you can see that it returns an integer, so I'm gonna store this into an integer I'm gonna call pressed. And then I can actually check which key was pressed. So let's say, for example, key left was pressed. In that case, I wanna make the direction go left. Dear x is gonna be minus one, and dear y is gonna be zero. Let's continue on for the other directions. Afterwards, I can go ahead and advance the position. And now finally, I wanna go ahead and draw the actual character and the food. So for that, I'm gonna use a function called mv add str. And you can see that this actually is a family of functions. I'm gonna use mv add str. You can see it gets y and x and a string. See, so this enables you to actually position a certain string on the screen.
I'm going to pass in position y into y and position x into x. And the string is going to be the character. I'm just going to use an asterisk for this. And I'm going to position the food as well. I'm going to give it a different symbol. And actually, before calling those, I'm, I want to clear up the screen, so I'm going to use the erase function. Finally, I want to limit the speed of the loop, so I'm just going to add a little sleep over there. I'm going to use for this use sleep. You see that this comes from the standard C library. And I'm going to add another include file right over here. Notice that this actually gets an argument in microseconds. That's one millionth of a second. So I'm going to pass here, for example, 100,000. Now let's go ahead and check out our game so far. I'm going to start by compiling this with GCC. Notice that I'm passing in minus L for adding an additional library, and then I'm passing end curses. Looks like I have a little problem here. Let's go ahead and fix it. I have a typo here. Let's fix it. Compile it again. Now let's go ahead and run it. You can see that it starts by going right, but I can press down and it goes down. Left goes left. So it works very nicely currently. Now let's finish off by writing the code that actually handles the character eating the food. So in that case, I want to check if the position of the character is the same position as the food. So let's go ahead and add that code right over here. Just going to refresh the food with a new position. I'm going to keep this again within 20, so it won't choose a number that is too large. Now let's go ahead and save this. Let's try out this game. Looks like it works nicely. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.